Hello, it's Duncan again. Uh, I've got a bit of a sore throat today, but um, I remain Chief Programmer of uh, Gilded Rose Inc. And today we're going to um, try and make a little bit more progress for our customers. Our customer was quite happy that we could now print stock. We could actually load it from a disk file. Uh, that seemed to be progress from their perspective. The last bunch they had in to do some programming spent six months and never really delivered anything. So the fact that we can actually look in a file and, and show it on the screen is great. But uh, we've had a discussion and uh, they've added another couple of stories to our backlog. So, so far, um, we did a couple of stories that were really just sort of proof of concept testy things. Uh, then we added um, to the stock list. Well, we added the ability to load the stock list and print it. And when they saw the printing, they realized that they hadn't specified it all that well and we had to add uh, the date in as well. So that was good. They, they could see that we could make changes quickly. Uh, so we're gaining confidence um, in our ability to understand the problem and, and they're gaining confidence in our ability to deliver for them. There are a couple more stories that they want us to think about. Uh, the first is, well, this one here, I'm sick of the command line. I want to view the stock list in my browser. Because command line is difficult to print. Now, our customer has learned really that they can edit the stock list in a text editor, uh, which is good. Uh, not great. They do, we do know that they want to be able to add to add to the stock list through some interface or other. But for now, they're happy to be able to view it in the in the browser in order to gain access to the printer. But we know the next thing they want to do is, is have something update the qualities um, of items over time. At the moment, they're having to go in every day to this file and update it, and they have to remember when they've done it, and, and it's a file with tabs in it. It's a bit of a pain. But the first thing they'd like to be able to do is print it better, so that's view it in a browser. And the second thing they want to be able to do then is have it update automatically. So today we're going to look at this view stock list in browser. This is going to be quite a detailed episode because we're going to have to look at how to talk HTTP. And the library we're going to use is HTTP4K. And the first thing we're going to do then is to add to our build.gradle some dependencies that will allow us to pull that in. Okay, so if we do that, we'll have access to HTTP4K. Now, this is test driven. We're going to start with a test, and we're going to start with a test um, that's quite functional. I'm going to say, ignoring what HTTP4K can give to us, maybe, what would a test look like that said we would show that we could list? So let's start writing a test, and we're going to say this is um, list stock tests. Now, our test then, I think, would say um, let's have some stock. Now, we, we did this in printing and listing the stock and printing it, very, very similar. So let's have a look and see what we did over the in the printing tests. Yeah. So in the printing test, we had what was empty and what wasn't empty. Empty normally just falls out if we iterate over over collections so maybe we'll not worry about that but let's take um let's take some of this and use it as a basis for our list stock test now we might want to extract that from printing tests if we thought that both were going to live for any amount of time but i don't think they do so i'm going to have the duplication for now let's not worry about empty so now we've got um, something, and our expected is not going to be a list of strings. It's, our expected is going to be some sort of HTML. So let's just say that's, um, for now, let's say it would be good to get a blank HTML document um, from some sort of server, and later on we'll expand that. OK. We're not just calling a function. Previously, we were calling the function stock print now. But what we actually want to do now is we want to create some sort of server. Don't know what a server looks like. I know I don't want Comsun Security NTLM. And when we create a server, we'll create it on our stock list. And now we want to have some sort of client. And I don't know what a client looks like yet, but we might want to build one given our server. So it knows how to connect to it. That means that it might know the HTTP address or something like that. And now we want to say, well, we want the client to make a request. 
um, and we'll put the we're going to put these at the root. So when you go to our web app at the root, it's going to list. So we we'll say there's going to be some sort of response, which is what's going to happen if you ask the client to make a request for the root. And that response we might expect to have a, a body. And so we're going to say that um, the expected is this response dot body. Now, we don't have these types yet. We know this tells us we need to build them and we need to find some sort of way to interface this with HTTPK, decide what we want to wrap on top of HTTPK. So this test might change, but this is just sort of roughing out what it what it looks like that we're going to have a server that we start in some sort of way. We're going to have a client. The server's going to know about the stock. The client is going to know how to talk to the server. We're going to use the client to make a request. And then we're going to say that we're going to assert things about that request. OK. What would a server look like? Well, we're going to start by creating a type here, I think. So. We now have a server and we can add a parameter to its constructor for the stock. Let us hold off on the client for now, but I'm just going to create a class of the client uh, in here, given some server. Right. HD4K has the idea of roots. So we can say our server has some roots and they are created with a roots function. And there's a bit of sort of jiggery pokery here. Um, you have to know the syntax. We're going to map root. We're going to bind get. So that root is going to respond to HTTP get requests, which is what we're going to be making here. And in here we have a handler. And the handler will take a request and return some sort of response. And a response requires the status code and has a body. And you see we can create a body from a string and the string that we said we wanted to try was just, can we get back HTML? Now, now for the client, in HTTP4K we can cut out the middleman. We don't actually have to run up a server. We'll see how to do that later. But in HPK, actually, we can treat a server as if it was a client. We can make requests on it. And the way we do that, so we would effectively here, we can say, look, our client is our server. We just cut and shut the two together. So we're going to say that our client is actually the server roots. And now, what does our request look like? Well, it's going to be a get. And its path is going to be root. And had I imported that, that would have been simpler. Um, that does return a response. And it just looks like response doesn't have body. But it does have body string. OK, so we're going to try running that test. A lot of faff. If you don't know HTTP for K, uh, this may not make a great deal of sense. But you can see how simple it is. Did we need to create a class for, we just deleted the class for client. Did we need to create a class for server? No, not really. Um, but I'm going to leave it for now because I think it may come in handy later. Well, uh, that's great. Turns out we don't need to look at the request. It's only um, um, not right. I mean, the expected HTML we have is going to be a, a, bunch, simpler, a bunch more complicated than this. So let us expand the expected HTML. And I'm going to take it out of here, um, just really so that stock list tests are nice and simple. So what do we want out of this? Well, we want, we'll use a here document to do this. And hopefully it'll do trim indent for us. So we'd like HTML, big HTML tag, and we'd like there to be a body. Um, and we can help ourselves quite a bit here if we tell IntelliJ the type of this string. So we can say inject that this is HTML. And we can tell it to remember that. 
And now you can see it's actually able to tell us things about HTML and the fact, for example, that we might want to, it does require a language tag. So IntelliJ will syntax check this string for us now, which is nice. Okay, inside this body, we want a table. And inside the table, we'd like some rows. And there are two items in our list, so we want two rows. So now we need to find a way to take our list and render it as two rows. And there are lots of ways of rendering HTML. We could do it by string concatenation or other things. But what we're going to do today is we're going to use a template language and we're going to use handlebars for no good reason other than I have in the past and I kind of know how to make it work. Okay, in order to use handlebars, we need to, um, first of all, import it, and that it's sort of cheated by pulling it into HTTP4K. I'm not going to use HTTP4K's integration with handlebars so much as do it by hand. So we need basically the handlebars compiler, uh, which for some reason isn't being imported. And then we can ask that compiler to compile a template for us. So this is our root template is handlebars.compile. And it will compile a template source. And I happen to know that we need a string template source. And string template source, my parameters pop up is not working just puts out that little tiny tiny little block so we need to go and look at this and needs a file name and a content a little bit odd that it needs a file name because it's just a string uh, but let's suck that up and say this is no such file and our template source will be just the html in fact, we can do better than that. What we can say is that um, this is our template source file. We're going to put it outside here for now. Template source equals, and we'll copy our document into that for now. So this is going to use template source. And instead of just rendering here, we're going to ask the root template to render. Uh, actually apply is the phrase apply I need to pass in something and we're going to pass it our stock so that's the thing it's going to suck data out of if we're right then this test will pass because it does nicely because there's nothing in the template and we have copied the output that we wanted now we can gradually start expanding what we're asking for. But the first expansion we would try would be you'd like two table rows out because we've got two items in our stock here. So handlebars has a way of iterating over things and it is I think each and I think a hash each. So the thing we're putting in is the stock which is a list. So I think something like I only need one of those, but I need to iterate. Oh, I think it's a slash. Let's try that. Okay, well, something worked quite well. So we now have two table rows to match our two items in our list. We've got some extraneous white space. I th think we've managed to do anything other than really just suck up that white space in here. Did it look like that? That will do for now. Those differences aren't significant to the way that HTML will be rendered. We could try and fix them in here. So we could try and say, what happens if I join these three lines? That might be better. See what that actually renders like. Uh, and that unfortunately renders them with no blank line in between, which is, uh, so maybe we could do that. That might be the best compromise. So that gives us a blank line after. Uh, well, that will do, will it? So no blank line before, a blank line after. 
So now we've sorted out iteration, now we need to sort out getting data out of each item that we're thinking over. So we would like to see a table cell, uh, which is TD for reasons that I never really understood. So the first table should have a cell in it for banana, the name, and the second one should have the kumquat. So if we run that, it will fail because we're not taking that data. Inside here, handlebars, called handlebars because they look like moustaches, I think allows us to say this dot name. Oh. Ah, but we put, forgot to put the TDs in. So, do that. So you see we're ratcheting up, we're saying let's increase the complexity every time, change what we expect, change what we, change the template. Okay, we've got the name. What's the next thing in our print list? Uh, actually, let's look in the test. So we were saying the cell by date was the second thing we put in there. So we put the name and the cell by date, but the cell by date has a format. Hmm. Okay, so and that format isn't the format that you normally get by just doing two string on a on the cell by date that we'd get out of the, our item. Let's just remind ourselves what item looks like. It's nice and simple. It's got a local date. So what I think we're going to do is we're going to create an object that has the data that we actually want to print in here so that handlebars can be simple. Now we could create a data class, but the simplest thing actually we can do is create a map because handlebars is quite happy to get things out of a map. And to show what that looks like, what we're going to say is when we come here, we're going to say apply to stock dot map. So we're going to, for each item in stock, we're going to call a function and we're going to call that is going to be it, or rather each one of those is an item to map. That doesn't exist yet. We're just going to create an extension function. And what should this look like? It is going to return a map of string to string. Now it could return a map of string to anything, but by making it string, we are enforcing the fact that this string is going to be at what be what rent is rendered in the HTML. Okay. So this is map of, and for now, we are going to say, we've only got the name in there, so we're going to take the item's name, we're going to say the map has a thing called, called name, which is name referenced from the item. That's the same as this.name, but we can remove it. So if we run this, that should be the same code. Well, not the same code, but the same have the same output, which it does. And that gives us the ability to say, well, we want, I'm going to drop this down here, maybe, like that, IntelliJ may be too clever, too dumb, don't know. We want another one, and this is going to be this cell by date. Now you see the point, if we say here that we want cell by date, to the item cell by date, that would just be a local date and the type of that would be wrong. So now we're not a string. So now we're forced to work out how we want to map that to a string. How do we want to map that to string? The answer is the same as we did in printing. So let's just make that private, not private for now so that we can go and ask the question over here. So this is date format, format my cell by date. Okay, let's run that. This time we updated what we were outputting and not what we expected. But if what we see is right, 28th and 20th and 30th of October, then we can just take this and say that is what we now want. So we're proving it, if you like, by copying it into here. And run that. Which passes. 
Are those dates right? Yes, because this was 29th of October and that's minus days and plus days. Minus one plus one gives us 28 and 30. Okay, what's the next thing we want to print? Again, looking in the printing tests. This then is the number of days until the sell by date. And we're going to have the same problem here as we had with printing, which is because our items have a sell by date, we're going to have to know a date in order to do that calculation. And we have the same problem as we have the printing about what day that is, because it will change as we, uh, if we run the tests. So we can't just say now. So what are we going to do? Well, let's work from the bottom up. We want to say, we want to put sell by days as a field. That means we've got to put in the map. That means we've got to calculate it from the item. And in fact, we had that in printing, didn't we? So we had here item days until sell by. So let's copy that. So I want it in a place where I can have it. So this is, uh, we're going to put this in here. This is to this dot days until sell by. And technically speaking, we want that to be local date time now. And that is a long. So we're going to do two string on that to make it the right time. If we run this then, we will get a result and the result will be plausible, but not relative to when we want it to be. We actually want the date this test to be run as being the 29th, but today is the 6th of November. So we need our test to have some way of fixing the date, uh, which means we need our item to map to have some way of fixing the date. So we're going to pull this out of the parameter and we're going to call that now. IntelliJ doesn't know that that uh, not nullable. Right. Now, for our server, we could run up our server and pass it now, but that means if we keep it running, it will eventually go out of date. So we'd run it on Thursday, and by Friday, now would be wrong. So what we want is for this to be able to work out when now is every time it makes a response uh, at the point where it makes a response. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this a variable uh, in this block of now. In fact, probably pull that out of here because you don't want to do that every time around that, uh, every time in that map. So we'll put it out here. Right. Now, we're going to f have a way of evaluating that. And so we can use a function in here and we can say that this is going to be, um, we call it clock or calendar. Um, I'm going to call it clock for now. So what does a clock do? A clock takes nothing and tells us a local date. Ordinarily, we want that to be local date time now. And that's a block that returns. So that's a lambda, either a lambda that returns local date time now, or alternatively, the method reference would be, I think, local date. In our test then, when we create our server, we can tell it how to get now. And the answer is how to get now is, uh, well, in fact, to return our now from the top there. Okay. Now, keep on saying now, uh, that's still minus nine and that's minus seven. So that seems wrong. Ah, now here, we need to be talking to the clock. So we're going to ask, we're going to invoke the functions of the clock. That's going to be a local date time. It's normally the local date time now, but in our tests, it's going to be the value of this, which is always that day. So it's always if we're running the tests on the 29th of October, which is my sister's birthday. Now our test will still fail because we still haven't got the right answer in our expected, but here we see we have got the right answer in our actual. So we're going to copy those and paste them back into here. And we might 
can test that a bit. And now we have a passing test. Now we have quality. So this time we're going to go the other way. We'll say, um, let's put the thing that we want in here. Bananas were 42. And Comquat quality was 101. We can paste that to here and say this quality. Duplicate this one and say that our quality is this dot quality to string. Splendid. So we're almost done really with this, but I think what we'll do is we'll move this server out into its own class. So we want to put that into our production code and we want to take the things that it also requires. So yes, those. Again. A little bit of tidy up. Uh, this can be private. We're not showing the empty version, I think. Um, that should be fine, unless we have special processing for it. We, we know we'll just end up with an empty table. Okay, before we check in though, let's go and see whether this works in reality. So we go to main, and we want to change our main function so that instead of printing the stock, it runs up a server that we can connect to. We have a server, so let's say, and we've got some stock now here, so let's say val server on my stock. Now we want to start the server, which is a method we don't yet have. So what would it mean to start a server on HTTP4K? Well, um, given some routes, we can start a server, we can, as server, and we need to tell it what sort of server we want to run, and we had I think in our Gradle and our build, we'd pulled in Undertow as a server. So we can use other things, but I think we can just say Undertow. And Undertow needs to know which port it's going to run on, so we will call that 8080, which is kind of traditional. And having done that, we need to start that thing. We probably want to remember it so that it's not garbage collected and we could stop it at some other time. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to remember that as a field. Um, and it turns out that we need to do that after that. Okay, does that work? We'll find out by running main, bring in a web browser. Okay, so that works. We share it to the customer. They ask us for uh, the date that we had in the printing at one time. We look at the printing tests. It had today's date at the top. And they'd like that table to look a bit better. At least could we put a header on it. Let's commit what we've got just for now. Run a server and list items. So let's go back to our list stock tests. We will add in here the fact that, hey, we would really like a header. It's headers. And this one should be name. This should be cell by date. This should be cell by days. And this should be quality. Run that. So now my tests fail a little bit because I've added in my header. Oh, actually, wrong way around. Now my tests fail because I haven't added in my header. So we can take what we expected here. Oh yes, I was working the test, wasn't I? Uh, so now we're going back into server and we're saying this thing knows about a table and that table wants a row for the header. 
Shall we see if that just works? It does, which is pleasing. In addition, though, the, our customer wanted the today's date, so this should be a, we'll call it an H1. We can worry about the formatting of that later. But in the case of this test, we were running it nominally on the 29th of October. So that will fail. Now we've got a bit of a problem because all we've passed in to our server, to our template, is the list of items. So here we've said we're going to pass in a list of items. We don't have what now is here. But um, no real problem. We will just expand our map. So that we're going to say we've got a map. What we're actually going to pass in is a map. And it's going to have two things. It's going to have now to now, the item we got out of the clock here, this is map of, and we'll put into it previously the items. So we can, we've moved everything down a level in our map. That will, idea, mm, interesting. Um, that will change the way that we have to refer to things in here. We know that we want a an H1. In that H1, uh, this will now refer to the top level map. So this is going to be this dot. And here, though, we are implicitly iterating over this here, but we want to say we want to implicitly now iterate over this dot items. Let's try that. Oh, we were very close, but we simply didn't apply the formatting. But that gives us quite a bit of confidence that we can just say in here, this is date format format. So again, by working in strings, we are we're not worrying about how handlebars renders things. We keep everything in strings so that we can control that. So this is date format dot format. Now, splendid. That all works. Now that it does, our printing I think is um, neither here nor there. We've removed the references to printing from main. If we remove our printing tests and then look in here, printout will be unused, so we can delete it. That makes to printout unused, so we can delete it. That makes days to sell till unused, so we can delete it. And that means we can take this and move it over into our server. Other places we could put it, sooner or later our server will get big and we'll want to separate these things out, but that will do for now. Okay, a uh, quick little look to see any warnings. Here, this date format, because it's returned from Java, it might be null. So IntelliJ is saying, ah, it might be null. Um, maybe you should make sure it isn't at the point where you call it, as opposed to when somebody else tries to access it. So that's not a bad uh, bad call in IntelliJ. And the same thing with this template. So we can sort that out by saying that that is a template, not a nullable template. Uh, these can both be private. And our roots are still public because we make use of them. We delve into them in our tests. That's got a green tick. That's got a green tick. That's dead and we can delete it. That's got a green tick. List stock, green tick. Persistent tests, green tick. Stock test. Ah, no green tick. F2. Same problem here as we had before. Fix that. Right. Off to commit. And we have here um, complete list stock from server. 
Splendid. Next time then, um, we will look at how to update qualities of items when we view the stock in the browser, which I think should be quite interesting because it will push out when we can update stock, having to save stock and a whole bunch of other, other interesting questions around time. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I certainly have. If you have, then you'll probably like Java to Kotlin, a refactoring guidebook, where I think this is the style of the code that we recommend. Thank you for watching.